in its last 10 editions, the Tour de Suisse has been Rui Costa's playing field, scoring a hat-trick from 2012 to 2014, Simon Spilak won in 2015 and 2017. In more recent years, the South Americans have dominated. Note that as opposed to the Dauphiné, where 5 out of the 10 winners went on to win the Tour in the same year, only Bernal successfully used the Tour de Suisse as a step-up to Tour de France glory in 2019. In terms of teams, it's again the Grenadiers who took the upper hand, winning the final three editions with Carapaz, Port and Bernal. Looking at this year's start list, Ineos is showing up with a strong squad, putting the final touches to Martinez' preparation for the Tour. I also can't imagine them, but supporting Martinez in Tour de Suisse. He's shown stunning form throughout the year, becoming third in the Volta a Algarve, Paris-Nice and winning the Basque Country. It will also be interesting to see how Pitcock is faring after having some fun on the mountain bike. At Bahrain, Gino Meder is a solid top 10 contender, who came second in the Tour de Romandie earlier this year. Wolfpack is looking to sharpen the knives further in their run-up to the Volta, with Remco showing stellar form and a dominant win in the Tour of Norway. Also Bora is showing up with a podium contender in the name of Alexander Vlasov, who won the Tour of Romandie at the end of April. With Kun Bauman out with a broken wrist and the Tour de France squad currently riding the Dauphiné, it's not clear whom Jumbo Visma will be riding for in Switzerland. I'm assuming they'll aim for a top 10 with Sam Omen, who rode a top 10 here last year. I really like Israel Premier Tech's team for this race with both Bevin and Fugelsang, as well as Wood showing good form. From Astana, I'm adding Lutsenko to my list of top 10 contenders, even though he hasn't been riding much this year and remains a bit of a question mark. At Alpesin, J. Vine just came second to Remco in the Tour of Norway, so he's clearly in good shape and gets a spot amongst my top 10 contenders. A last minute addition to the start list, which cannot be ignored, is Tam and Arsman over at TSM, who's just returned from a more than solid Giro and who has a very good TT in the legs. Finally, I'm taking Pozzo Vivo, who showed his form throughout the Giro. In my book, Evenepoel is the man to beat. He's in great form, his climbing is great, and even when dropped, he doesn't break, which is a problem for his contenders given the 25 km long ITT that ends this year's Tour de Suisse. Martinez and Vlasov each get three stars, J. Vine and Tame Arsman each get two stars, Meder, Omen, Lutsenko, Fuglsang and Pozzo Vivo each get one star. Before sharing my podium prediction, here's an overview of the 10 I'm having down for stage hunting. Serrano at Movistar, Izagire at Kofidis, Kovi and Hirschi at UAE, Igita at Bora Hansgro, Durgis at Total Energy, Cosnefroy at AG2R, Oldani at Alpesin, Matthews at Bike Exchange and Monique at Lotto Sudal. In terms of podium prediction for the 2022 Tour de Suisse, I have even a pool on the top spot for the simple reason that I don't think that Martinez will manage to get a big enough gap heading into the 25 km long ITT. This puts Martinez in second and Vlasov in third. If you like this type of content, please like, subscribe, comment. There's more to follow. See you next time.